Hi everyone, today we talk about TileAppJL, which is a typography reconstruction software. Uh, it's the implementation, so the Julia implementation of TileAppJL, which is all, also available in MATLAB and Python, and of course it's available on GitHub. So my name is Felix Wechsler, I'm a PhD student at the Leibniz I PhD in Jena, and Lars Lepgering supported me during this work, and he also wrote the MATLAB version of TileAppJL. So what is typography? Um, in general, Typography is a lensless imaging technique. So you take a sample and then you illuminate that sample with a laser beam, for example, which is a coherent light source. And then you don't put any lenses behind the object, but instead you simply put the detector behind the object. And depending on the distance, how far you place it from the sample, you have to apply different um, physical propagation schemes um, to, yeah, basically to describe this model. And as you might know, um, light is an electric wave and a wave has two properties, the amplitude and phase. And unfortunately, if, a pl if you place the detector behind the sample, you're only um, able to measure the absolute, squ the up square value um, of the electrical field and therefore the phase is basically lost. And in typography, we want to measure both the phase and the amplitude, or better said, we want to recover it. The general experimental setup looks like this. So as I said, you have the probe and then you illuminate the object. But instead of taking a single image, you take a sequence of images. And in or the difference between those images is that you slightly translate the object all the time. So you make an image, you translate the object, you make an image again. And there is a certain overlap um, of the laser beam and the object and if you translate it you, you have basically a lot of information measured twice but in a different way and from that you can finally combine them combine all those images together um, basically pose an optimization problem and then you um, you can use different algorithms to recover the phase and the amplitude basically by um, um, optimizing for phase and amplitude which fits to all of the measurements um, so TileAppJL is an implementation of a, of a family of stochastic gradient descent type algorithms for an iterative reconstruction of typography data sets. And in general, it's applicable for wavefront sensing. So if you want to characterize uh, a wavefront of a probe of a laser beam, and it's also available, or you can also use it for microscopy to analyze samples. Um, via the CUDA JL toolbox, there is a support for CUDA. And also from the beginning on, we, um, we try to put a flexible type hierarchy um, to add more solvers um, on the way. Um, so what I discovered or what we found um, important for performance, which is um, in general true for GPU programming, is um, that we do an allocation-free programming. So this Pi engine is an iterative algorithm and quite often it has a, a large amount of iterations and therefore um, you do all the time the same operations basically and the errors in our case are six dimensional but their shapes can also um, vary dynamically um, can vary dynamically on the specific problem and to provide uh, to avoid any memory allocation during those iterations we need a lot of memory buffers because the shape and the intermediate results are very different so we need a lot of memory buffers to handle and to keep in memory and to make that very easy, um, we use a, a kind of functional pro function style of programming. So let's see that this example down here. So we have the operation the detector to object. So basically propagating the light from the detector to the object or also the other way around. So we need also an object to detector. Um, yeah, in this case, so to do that, we create a new function which captures basically outer variables. Um, and because of that, Julia Bach, we use um, this let block statement. Um, but yeah, so the function is the Fraunhofer called and we just calculate a few intermediate results and then we define a new function here and before defining that function we create also a buffer which we need for the FFT shift operation and then in this function itself we only do an in-place FFT, we do a little bit of scaling and then we use the buffer. And what this Fraunhofer function then does, it returns the object to detector function and the object to detector function doesn't allocate any memory at all because it uses the buffer, this buffer um, for the shift operation. Um, so down here, then we can create the function and then we can also run the function. And as you see, there's no memory allocation going on because all the intermediate results are stored in the buffer. 
And we can do that. We basically um, have, have, have a lot of different functions, which have a lot of different buffers, but passing around functions, um, I feel like it's much easier to, to avoid any confusions because instead of um, giving around five or six buffers, you just handle one function and that function implicitly stores that buff, uh, um, basically contains the buffers. Um, so yeah, here's just an example how it works. So that's a test image. So um, this is an illustration where the face is encoded as a color and the intensity is coded, or so the amplitude is encoded as an intensity. Um, so that's the test image. Then we generate a probe, which is basically the laser beam. Um, in that case, it's a Gaussian profile. And then to measure, we have to scan the laser beam over the object. So this is what we use a scanning grid for. So Tylab generates our scanning grid. And then we can already simulate the data set. So as I said, we do the procedure where we illuminate a part of the sample, then we measure it, then we move the sample a little and then measure it again. And finally, yeah, the images we obtain look like this. So you don't see that much because there is no lens in there, right? So this is not really an image, but instead it's the information of the object encoded in a certain way. And now we then put that and we put those images in our reconstruction algorithm and to reconstruct it. For storing the data set, we use the HDF file format, which is also compatible to the MATLAB and the Python version. So we can yeah, simulate it and load it in the other version if you want to. Um, yeah, then we load the data set again. We do a few in a few initializations. So there's a little bit of boilerplate because we have so many parameters in general in tachography that, yeah. So you, if you want to go for the details, um, feel free to check out the notebook afterwards. But right now I can't, can't explain all of them because there are so many parameters. Um, yeah, we just skip over that. And then we, here we just select the engine, which is a certain type. And then we can um, call Tylib reconstruct and depending on the engine, it does certain dispatches, depending on the parameters, it does certain, certain dispatches. For example, if we use CUDA or non-CUDA arrays, um, yeah, it basically decides always on the type what it has to do. And yeah, the final reconstruction looks like this. And if you compare that to the ground truth, you see that the colors, colors they roughly match. And also you can see that the structure was recovered and all that was recovered from the diffraction images you've seen before. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So feel free to check out the notebook afterwards and also feel free to contact me in case you have any questions and thanks a lot for your attention.